Welcome to Mayo Clinic Q&A. I'm Dee Dee Stephen. Thanks to its combination of practice, education, and research, Mayo Clinic is built to respond quickly to a medical crisis such as COVID-19. One area where Mayo Clinic has taken the lead is the convalescent plasma program. Joining us to discuss is the site principal investigator for Mayo Clinic Rochester, Dr. Philippe Bauer. Welcome to the program. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah? Of course. Can you start off by just explaining for the listeners what is convalescent plasma and what is this program? Yes, yeah, so convalescent plasma is not a new um, uh, concept. Uh, it has been used in the past uh, with the flu, more recently with the SARS, with uh, MERS. Um, and the idea is to take uh, blood from uh, people who have been affected by the disease and have recovered from the disease, remove uh, the red cells and uh, keep the, the yellow substance of the blood, which is rich in antibodies. It takes about uh, two to three weeks for the antibody to build up in a system. So uh, with such an infection like uh, COVID-19, uh, it seems important to bring up front a certain amount of antibody to fight the infection. The time the body uh, build up uh, their own response or maybe uh, the use of uh, antiviral agent or other agent have the time to work. So how did Mayo Clinic get involved in this program? Well, this is a fascinating story. So in the mid-March, uh, Mayo physicians uh, were uh, contacted uh, to um, explore the possibility of using convalescent plasma. Uh, I was myself involved with the NIH um, in the convalescent plasma study uh, across the country for the flu. And so we had a structure in place uh, which was very convenient. So uh, the actual uh, principal investigator, Dr. Joyner, contacted me and others to see if you could mount a um, uh, utilization of a convalescent plasma. And at that time, things got extremely uh, rapidly, um, uh, progressed extremely rapidly to a point that uh, three, four days later, we had a meeting uh, with about 100 fish and across the country, the folks with whom we uh, work with the NIH and others, and uh, everybody agreed that uh, we could uh, mount a, a convalescent plasma um, study, uh, should I say. And the FDA became extremely interested and supported us uh, in this uh, enterprise and designed Mayo Clinic as the principal uh, IRB, meaning um, uh, we would coordinate uh, the uh, covalent plasma program at the national level. Kind of expanding on that as the lead institution, uh, what does that mean? What is Mayo Clinic's role? So uh, Mayo Clinic uh, has been the uh, coordinator of um, uh, getting the plasma, uh, getting the plasma, making sure that the plasma is rich on antibodies and facilitate the distribution to uh, uh, institution that were willing to participate. So it's a huge infrastructure. Mayo Clinic is also the, uh, the central IRB. Each time you do a, a study or use a, 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 a therapy which is not um, initially approved yet, uh, you want to make sure that you protect uh, the people who get uh, this therapy. And uh, usually each institution develops their own uh, protocol and talk to their own uh, committee. And uh, uh, by having a central IRB here at Mayo, we have dramatically facilitated uh, the institution and distribution of uh, this um, uh, coalescent plasma worldwide. I would say that in three weeks, we achieved that what it takes usually 18 months uh, to be obtained. So um, we uh, are um, collecting uh, the data uh, associated uh, uh, with the plasma, we establish a registry. Uh, if a center uh, wants to participate, all they have to do is sign online. Uh, and so all the uh, paperwork has been dramatically uh, improved. We cut a lot of red lines so we can, we were able to administrate the plasma uh, very quickly, I would say in about three weeks. 
That's incredible. Can you talk yes. a little bit about where the program is at? So how many sites are involved? How many physicians are involved? And how many patients have received plasma to this point? Yes, so as of now, we have uh, more than 2,200 sites which are involved. And uh, there's uh, more than uh, 5,500 physicians through this program. Uh, we have screened more than 14,000 patients and uh, more than 9,000 patients, I think we went above 9,000 today, have uh, received plasma as of now. And I understand that there was a recent grant to fund the expanded access program. Can you tell me a little bit about that? That's correct. So uh, Barda uh, has um, uh, provided a funding uh, to Mayo Clinic to support the infrastructure. And uh, of course, uh, you know, the management and the coordination of all this program and also the collection of uh, plasma, uh, the treatment of plasma, make sure the plasma is safe to be, uh, to be uh, injected, make sure the plasma has at least uh, antibodies uh, that are supposed to help uh, the patient. And so it's a huge infrastructure and this money will go uh, for that. For those wondering, what are the necessary steps to be a part of this program? As a physician, or let's say as a provider, all you have to do is uh, sign online, sign for your institution, and uh, sign online as a, like me, a, a site a principal investigator. It can be one or several for a given, uh, let's say, medical center and uh, check with your blood bank uh, how to provide uh, the covalent plasma. Not every center has covalent plasma, but there's a, an organization uh, nationwide who is able to distribute the plasma, and actually the plasma has been circulating back and forth, so the, 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 you know, the, most, the most patients get the plasma they need. At the beginning, uh, we start slowly, but we got a lot of people wanted to uh, give uh, blood after having been affected by the disease and thanks fully have recovered from it. And uh, now we have having more and more uh, a plasma supply that can be provided. Of course, the burning question, when will we know if convalescent plasma is effective? in helping patients with COVID-19? Well, you can imagine that with 9,000 uh, patients infused already, and I don't know when we started exactly, but probably uh, you know, uh, early April, uh, we have actually some data and actually uh, we uh, recently submitted the first uh, safety analysis. We don't have any uh, data yet to the efficacy, but we have a hint. Uh, safety analysis uh, focused on what happened uh, four hours after the infusion and within the first seven days. So we already have some data which are uh, not uh, published yet, but have just been submitted to the FDA and seems encouraging in terms of um, uh, safety. I would say the safety that we observe with plasma is no different from uh, the safety that we use when you use plasma, uh, regular plasma for or the reasons such as, uh, uh, you know, in case of bleeding or in case of uh, uh, need for a coagulation factor. So uh, at least in terms of safety, uh, uh, we have already some data. Of course, we have to wait at least 30 days uh, after the infusion uh, for a patient to, uh, to analyze the data and to see if we can make a difference. It's complex because patients are different and there's different treatments that are tried sometimes. Uh, but uh, with the, 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 the amount of uh, patients that we have enrolled, we expect to have uh, some efficacy data uh, pretty soon as well. For anybody wanting to learn more, how can they do that? There's a website, uh, which is uh, it's called uh, www.uscovidplasma.org, which has uh, literally all the information uh, that uh, you can check. There's information for physician, the information for, I would say, uh, the general population, and you can get more information um, uh, online uh, on this program. Dr. Bauer, is there anything else that you wanted to add? Uh, yes, of course. You know, I think it's very important to understand all the amount of generosity uh, the uh, patient who have uh, recovered from a disease um, have uh, provided to provide plasma. I'm amazed to see how many people uh, 
approach us, uh, including those who didn't have the disease. Unfortunately, those cannot get, uh, cannot give their plasma yet. But if people tested positive, recovered from the disease, they are eager and willing to give their plasma in the hope they can help others. And I found that extremely encouraging and uh, it's, it's, it makes us very proud to be part of this program because it's at the end the generosity of those people that matter more than what we do, which is really what we are supposed to do. Well said, that is very encouraging to hear. Well, we've been discussing Mayo Clinic's Convalescent Plasma Program with Dr. Philippe Bauer. Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Bauer. You're welcome. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts. To see a list of all the Mayo Clinic podcasts, visit newsnetwork.mayoclinic.org. Then click on podcasts. Thanks for listening and be well. We hope you'll offer a review of this and other episodes when the option is available. Comments and questions can also be sent to Mayo Clinic News Network at mayo.edu.